Let's see how PagerCart, an online grocery delivery and pickup service, leverages PagerDuty incident workflows to automate their incident response process. Miyoko is a SecOps manager at PagerCart, and she wants to standardize a major incident workflow across all their P1 and P2 incidents. To do this, she creates a new workflow titled Major Incident Workflow, which will run for all incidents that meet this criteria. To start out, Miyoko adds a workflow trigger, which defines how and when the workflow will be kicked off. She wants to trigger a workflow based on priority, so she uses a conditional trigger. Here, she indicates that the trigger should evaluate to true whenever the incident is a P1 or a P2, and that it applies across all services. Since PagerCart is using PagerDuty's event orchestration, Miyoko knows that the major incident workflow will also pick up those automatic priority changes as a trigger. In addition to the conditional trigger, she also wants to provide responders with a way to manually trigger this workflow from services like Slack, Microsoft Teams, mobile, and desktop, so she adds those manual triggers as well. Once the triggers are set up, she starts adding the actions the major incident workflow should take. To begin, she creates a per-incident Slack channel, so responders can effectively communicate in one place. She uses a reference variable, so the incident number can be inserted as part of the channel name. Next, she wants to ensure that there is an incident commander and ops lead added to each major incident. To do so, Miyoko sets up an action to add the corresponding escalation policies, which will automatically add them to the incident response and types in a message to be sent with the request. She continues to add actions for all the important pieces of her workflow, including subscribing the right stakeholders, sending status updates, and attaching a Google Meet conference bridge. When she's ready, Miyoko publishes her new workflow. This workflow is ready to go. It will now automatically trigger on all PagerCart P1 and P2 incidents and can be run manually by responders. Let's see what that looks like in action. A newly created incident just came in. If it had been marked as a P1 or P2, the workflow would have been triggered automatically. However, it doesn't have a designated priority. Olivia, a responder on Miyoko's team, has been assigned the incident. After looking at the details, she updates the priority to P2. This triggers the major incident workflow. We can now see a new Slack channel was created and linked to the incident, an incident commander and ops leader added, and a conference bridge has been added. And if we jump over to the Status Updates tab, we can now see that a team has been subscribed. And the status update has gone out. Responders can also trigger a workflow directly from the mobile app and immediately jump on the Slack channel or conference call. They can even trigger a new workflow directly from Slack. With the new incident workflow in place, Miyoko can rest assured that the right people will be quickly mobilized and brought together to communicate effectively during a major incident at PagerCart. This means responders can focus all their efforts on restoring the service.